my purpose is to take the image that I have in here of the, how the universe works from, from the ultra small to the ultra big and us in the middle and, and project that out here with, with sound and pictures for you to be able to see what's in my head. You know, we're, as I say, we're in the middle of that spectrum. Well, it's kind of intuitively makes sense that here we are with this, this dimensionality and we can see things a certain degree bigger, a certain degree you know, further away, a certain degree smaller and further away on that scale. And uh, there was a very interesting look at that mathematically. If we look at the, the, the largest scale that we can see and that we can conceptualize, that we, we can interact with, it's called the Hubble sphere. Uh, so astronomer Hubble, you know, saying this is as far as we can ever see because if light is coming at us at the speed of light and the idea of, of an expanding universe, which may or may not be the case, but that's the current con conventional theory, it's not the only theory and it's not the one that we include as our, our preferred theory in the clinical theory of everything. We prefer, what Einstein preferred was a, 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 a steady state universe, a universe that's, that's infinite in time and space and, and not expanding or contracting. Uh, and there's good evidence for that. The, the Hubble sphere is as far as we can see in space. So whatever's beyond that, there's no way for us to know in, the, in our current paradigm, there's no, the theory says, there's no way that we can ever know if the universe is infinite or finite. We can only see this far. So it's cellular. It's, we can see the cell that we are at the center of. If we were at the edge of that cell, we'd see that same size cell over here. So, and, and so if the universe is infinite, we can't know. We can't prove that it is or it isn't. Uh, Einstein thought that, that it's a steady state universe, that it goes on forever, no beginning, no end, spatially or temporally. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the biggest. What's the smallest is called the Planck scale, the, the, the smallest unit of, it's a unit of space, time, energy, so unit of everything, a Planck, is that one little dimensional unit that, that then theoretically makes up everything at bigger scales. And the, there's, there's this idea of looking at the, the platonic solids, that there's, there's five platonic solids that Plato contemplated, and, and only four were publicly taught. The fifth one, you had to be an initiate. You had to be studying, engaged studying with, with him to, to learn about. That was the, the, the most sacred, the highest form. And that was considered the, really the blueprint for, for everything, blueprint for creation. And that's the dodecahedron. There's, there's many interesting bits of support, supporting evidence even today for, for why that that may be the case. Uh, it's, it's obviously the platonic solids are, are, are the only completely regular, symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical geometric forms. So these are resonance forms. So if we think, consider the Planck unit as, say, a sphere, these are still the, the fundamental resonance uh, patterns within each of those units of space, time, and energy. And, and consciousness, and information. So uh, <clears throat> the beauty is that if we go from the Planck scale to the Hubble sphere scale, we can ask the question on, on a mathematical basis, uh, on a geometric basis, like logarithmic basis of your mathematician, what's at the center of that spectrum? And it turns out are the center of our brainwave spectrum, the alpha rhythm, is exactly in the center of that spectrum. So here we are, and that's as far as we can see from, you know, from this hilltop of being human. <laughs> so once you see that, okay, it makes sense. Uh, and uh, let's move on to the next, next topic, next question.